some of my favorite edits that I get back from you are the ones where you ask questions because you know I'll read it and then respond to you. Yeah. But it depends on what I get there. So I often I often think to myself, like, did Alyssa ask this question and then wind up um, like wind up waiting for four or five days until I read, like reread the script and, and went over her comments and whatnot. And then I answer and you're like, oh, that's what it is. Like, I often wonder if you're left in anticipation. Uh, sometimes. Other times you'll just kind of come up with an answer. And I'll be like, what was this for? <laughs> oh. <laughs> Welcome. You are entering a strange realm. A realm of what ifs. What if movies, television shows, and video games were better, worse, bizarre, or downright different? What might they look like? Find out on today's episode of Cinecasters! Welcome back to Cinecasters. This is the show and or podcast where we watch other shows, but not podcasts, and movies. And we try to restructure them or remake them and deconstruct them into something that might be a little bit different or hit a little bit harder or differently because we thought the themes could be, you know, changed up a little bit and uh, maybe be more impactful to us. I am Dejangles the Strange and I'm joined today by Alyssa. Hello. And today we are looking at the 2015 sort of science fiction drama romance the age I, of Adeline. I wanted to call it like sci fantasy. Yeah, it's it's it's. I mean, it's not really science fiction, but the like the lack of aging in the main character. Yeah, is um, sort of implies that it's science fiction, and also but they, and the the narration is yeah, all like very scientific. They, like, oh, and this is going to be discovered in twenty thirty five. Exactly. Yeah, I thought the narration is actually what, what is actually what tips it into the science fiction more than anything yeah. else. Um, because it's very uh, matter of fact, you know what I mean? Like the temperature inside Adelaide drops to 85.5 degrees Fahrenheit. And then when the lightning struck the car, it increased the voltage, you know, across her body, defibrillated her heart. And uh, it's very matter of fact, which I think is what makes it science fiction. Because the majority of this movie is in fact a drama. Yeah. And and I would argue it's trying to be a romance. It's supposed to be. I feel like that's what it's... Okay, so, like, there is... I count this movie as part of, like, a, an undisclosed trilogy or, like, an, an unofficial ad hoc trilogy. Okay. Uh, with The Time Traveler's Wife. Yep. And then I think the movie's called It's About Time. Okay. Uh, that's the... I'll look it up, but that's the one with Dom Hall Gleason and Rachel McAdams where he can travel through time. Mm-hmm. Uh, but only within, like, points of his own life. Um, I think that's what See, it's called. To me, uh, and there's this. If you movie. just heard the <laughs> smoke alarm outside talking to me, I in French. did hear the smoke alarm outside. Yeah, talking to you in French. Yeah, in French. I don't know what it's saying. I, d I haven't learned that much French yet. Um, yeah, about to time me, is what it's called. This about time. Okay, to me, this movie was more like they wanted to be really smart with like how they played with time mm -hmm. and then arrivals saw the movie and was like i want to do that but better i haven't seen arrival yet so <gasps> i know i know nate's been on my ass about this for like years it is so good yeah. you have to see it yeah i want to see it but yeah because i feel like um so i've read the book of the time traveler's wife and i've watched the movie and uh both are good I haven't. um both are good but uh, this movie feels like it's trying to be in the same vein where, like, we're using a science fiction or fantasy element that doesn't really need to be explained all that well in mm -hmm. order to create a particular kind of drama or moment in which the science or fantasy takes a backseat to the drama that is caused by the, the event, in this particular mm -hmm. case, time travel, right? So um, in the... In The Time Traveler's Wife, we play a lot with continuity. The whole thing is told from, mostly from um, her point of view. I can't remember her name right now. But it's mostly told from her point of view, the, the Time Traveler's Wife. And and how her husband like bounces back and forth across her her life. And, and the, how they slowly fall in love. But he bounces around continuity while she experiences it 
in a linear fashion, the way you would with time. And it's really quite interesting yeah. to see a romance built around somebody who can't stay in one temporality, right? In a linear yeah. temporality. Whereas uh, About Time deals with a character, Tim, who can travel through time at will, but only to points in his own life. So he travels in his body back to points in his own life. And what winds up happening is he plays a lot with um, causality. If he goes back and changes too much, then he comes when he comes back to the future, everything is different. Yeah. And, and so he plays with, like that movie sort of plays with that a lot. And that's really, really fun. But it's a backseat to the drama and romance of living life. In The Time Traveler's Wife, it's really a romance, especially in the book, uh, which gets gr gratuitously sexual for some reason. I have no idea why like i'm down for some sex as well but it's sort of like i don't need to i don't need you to go into this much detail yeah um uh the whereas about time is much more about um uh, less about romance the romance story and more about like what is this existential question about how life kind of works like how do i feel about life how do i live life to the fullest uh yeah even though I have the ability to travel back in time, how do I make it so that that this ability, which and he actually uses it in really mundane ways in the movie. We should talk about that movie maybe, but he uses it in really mundane ways and it winds up having like profound impacts on his life and his personality and character and character growth, which is really quite interesting. Um, yeah. Like for instance, he uh, at one point in time, he finds out that his dad is dying spoilers and he decides to go back in time both him and his dad it's a hereditary thing both him okay. and his dad go back in time to a point where they had already spent a day together so it'll never change anything or it'll change very little to a time they'd already spent together like a day where it was just the two of them mm -hmm. and then they just do that day again except yeah. they're both present right and it's it's like that's such a little thing like you could go back in time and you could like change the course of history and instead he's just like i'm gonna spend one more day with my dad it's yeah. it's it's so mundane and yet at the same moment it's distinctly profound and this movie is not that no this it movie wanted to be it wanted to be and that's the thing is i think the setup is uh, and the conceit of this is really interesting it's really interesting and you can tell like the drama is there and the the pieces are on him all in place and yet it just doesn't work yeah i have a couple of reasons why i think why but i want to hear your some of your goods and bads or if what you thought about the science drama elements i really liked it i wish that there was more of it like i like i did not like the narrator yeah was there too much but i did not need to hear about every single little detail of this person's life while you're showing it to me i can I, i'm i i have a brain i can kind of figure it out myself yeah, i i know that it's supposed to be used as like a parallel especially the beginning when she gets struck by the lightning yeah but i actually think that the narrator explaining what's happening detracts because if you're yes. smart you can sort of figure out especially because they they're very deliberate in showing it on screen if you're smart you can figure out that she's drowning and then the cold mm -hmm. temperature is and you could do some things cinematographically photographically What's the word I'm looking for? Cinematically. You could do some things cinematically to show that her temperature is dropping, right? Simple yeah. things like making her lips look blue as she's sort of floating in this pool. And when the lightning hits, you can show the effects on her body again. And then when you parallel that with the ending, we know she's sitting in the cold. Her body temperature is dropping. And then the defibrillator happens. We all know that that is an electric current or that's common knowledge. I shouldn't say we all know. It's common knowledge. Yeah. It's like, oh, we're creating parallels, but we don't have to explain it. I actually thought that the narrator, cool as that as the concept was, actually detracts from the movie itself. Yeah. Particularly also when whenever it's like Adelaide Bowman was 107 years old and had grown up in San Francisco. It's like the part of the reason why I don't think this works is because it's being told to us. Uh, in a flashback I yeah. actually think I think that you could still do it in flashback if it was like um, Adeline is uh, is experiencing the present and then she flashes back like we keep getting mm -hmm. flashbacks but then not tell the audience yeah we're experiencing her flashbacks and you're like but this is the same woman how is time so different then we do the whole thing where she's in the pool and gets struck by lightning 
and and you sort of go forward from there and realize that that moment has caused something in her body to stop aging yeah which is not how medicine works by the way electrolysis via hypothermia is not how that works we don't know that it could you know it could be oh it's true we we still have 17 more years until that's discovered according to the movie bullshit does that mean that people are gonna start living forever after that i'm gonna come back to that because the problem with that plot conceit is if you're gonna throw something like that at us it essentially has huge uh, rebounding causal effects on the world. That means in 2035, people no longer need need to age because we can just replicate this process. Yeah. Which means that's a way more interesting story than than some woman who doesn't age and we go through this drama. Right. That's a way more interesting <laughs> science fiction conceit. It's that's a bla- bad cl- plot conceit because you're giving me something more interesting than what I'm watching. Yeah. Um. My other issue was that they kept kind of amping it up to her telling Ellis about what she is. Mm. And we don't get that moment. Uh, oh, you, oh, yeah. They sort of pass over that moment when they're in the hospital. And it's yeah. just sort of like, oh, he knows. And you're like, great. Oh, great. Why isn't he flipping out? Right? <laughs> Especially, you know, his father was her sweetheart at one point yeah that's weird that's also (laughs) weird and you want to know it gets even weirder the movie never mentions this because it's not that kind of movie but they're tunnel buddies i know that's crude to say it that way but the fact that that, i mean we're all thinking it we're all thinking it right and i'm using i'm using crudeness for the sake of of uh, comedy here but like the fact that the movie doesn't uh doesn't you know talk about it or or even acknowledge it is because it's not that kind of movie however what winds up happening is it comes across like adeline doesn't care yeah and so we wind up with the fact that we know that she and ellis have had sex and we can assume based on how close they were that william and adeline have had sex which means that she is on some level okay with the fact that she slept with ellis's father yeah and I understand, like, I mean, the idea here, I think, is it's supposed to be, like, time travel, except without Adeline aging, yeah. as opposed to, like, going going back and forth through time. But the plot conceits wind up playing out the same way, because we're just playing with the linearity of a person who doesn't age, as opposed to her going back in time. But it yeah. winds, out this, winds up with very, very similar uh, story beats. Uh, so, it, but what, I mean, the difference is, is that William is no longer a young man. Uh, so, and he's not even the same person. It's been has to be at least over 40 years because they're celebrating their 40th wedding anniversary, right? Something like that. Yeah. So it has to be at least over 40 years since William uh, and Adeline had met uh, or had flirted and, and courted. But it's still the f- fact still remains because the movie doesn't acknowledge it. Adeline and or Ellis and his father are Adeline's had sex with with a father and son, and that doesn't come across as as weird. I actually it's think it's so weird. I actually think if the movie had acknowledged it and talked about it, been like, "Hey, wait a second, like either a William because it was the '60s or '50s, I think. Mm-hmm. Mm, yeah, because it was uh, the, the '60s or '60s. It must have. Uh, we co- it could be that William never. And, and Adeline never had sex because that was not something that was readily available. However... They were traveling together, just the two of them in, in Paris yeah, or in France. And it's the 60s. And it's the 60s. Yeah. And... I think it's pretty... So I think if, if the movie either had gone the way where William was being a gentleman or Adeline was still a product of her time and didn't want to have sex because, um, you know, oppressing women and how society viewed impurity and virginal status of women and however fucked up that is but that's still a reason why it could have been that way right yeah uh or the other option would be if the movie actually talks about it and acknowledges it and then goes this happened and then all the characters have to deal with it and william is sort of like that was 40 years ago uh, at least right which means and it's clear what i do like that this movie does is it's clear that william is stuck on adeline but as a concept, not as a woman. Yeah. He's had a life 40 years with his wife, Kathy. And I actually think that, that that's very profound. The fact that he can be stuck on Adeline and be 
be like this woman who was, you know, this near miss, as he calls it, has now shown up at my, or her daughter ostensibly has shown up at my doorstep and it turns out to be the same woman, but yet he still, it, it never comes across like William is, um, He's not trying to chase after her. No, he's again. not trying to chase after her at all. He's he not, just wants some answers. Yeah, he's and just then freaking he's like, out. He's still, yeah, he's freaking out as someone should when they find out that the person they love can't age. Yeah, well, more so than that, right? they find out that the person that their son loves is the same yeah. person that you almost married forty years yeah. ago, right? Yeah. But the um, the fact remains the f- the movie doesn't acknowledge the weirdness behind that and that to me is one of the strangest things because there's so much drama that could come from that simple acknowledgement and this movie i think is trying to be a romance slash drama but it doesn't land and i have a reason why i think that is yeah yeah i i guess i want to get into that i I have have more notes i have tons more notes but i was gonna wait till later but yeah let's do this um Uh, no, no, I was going to get into into it. Like, the okay. reason that I think that this movie doesn't work is because all the reasons we just said, it's because the characters are boring. Each of, okay. the, each of the characters is basically, like, the perfect version of themselves. They yeah. don't have flaws. Yeah. Ellis gives away his money to charities. Yeah, he's, he's like, this independently wealthy dude who started a business. I do think his business is really interesting, the fact that he had yeah. climate change. But, like, he his job doesn't matter. It's just so he can be a wealthy young man who is attractive. Yeah. Adeline, despite being 107 years old, doesn't have any quirks or flaws. Except she can speak many languages. But that's not a flaw. That's her quirk. That's not a quirk either. Like you need something that makes you that distinguishes that's what they, you. I think that's what they tried to do with was like make her multilingualism a quirk. That's not a quirk. That's what I'm, what I'm talking about. But is that's like, what they played on. Was like, oh, I like how you read. And it's, it's like he's she's reading Braille or whatever, right? Sure, and but then, like the reason she's like, reading Braille he's is he's trying to talk to someone in, in Portuguese, but he only knows Spanish, and she just comes on as like. <laughs> and then like but that's hands the quir- phone back to it, him it's quirky yeah. it's quirky I, i'll admit it's co- sort of like quirky it plays off of part of her, as part of her character but it only it, it only strengthens her character it does nothing to um to show her flaws right yeah uh and flaws are a character's I, strength and by that i mean like in terms of writing not in terms of like what the character's strengths are i think that one flaw that she does have is that she's like paranoid is maybe she? a little She's been running her whole life and changing her identity every ten years. Yeah, every decade is what is what they uh, they say. But yeah. she doesn't play off like somebody who's paranoid. No, she doesn't. So that's what I I'm mean, saying. A little bit, not where really. She's like, don't come to my apartment. But then she doesn't really care either. At the same time, it, to me, the entirety of the conflict is self-imposed by Adeline. Yes. There is never, I mean, after she runs away from the FBI, they never show back up again. There's no one actually chasing her, even though it's implied. It's like, I was sort of always waiting. I'd seen this movie before. I was sort of always waiting for something to show up in order to add to conflict. But really, the only conflict is Adeline falls in love. Adeline doesn't want to fall in love. Adeline chooses to not fall in love. Adeline's in love anyway. But then she falls in love anyways. Yeah. Adeline decides she's going to meet her love's uh, parents. Turns out Adeline's, or turns out her lover's parents' former lover that Adeline fell in love with but didn't want to fall in love with but fell in love with anyway and then left. And it's just sort of like all of this conflict is ridiculous, like could have been avoided if you had just explained the problem because... There's no reason for her to hide. The FBI never shows back up. Nobody's chasing her anymore. And it never explains why. Like, So if she does tell people that she's aging or doesn't age, then will the FBI show up again? Like, They never come back? I don't know. Like, This is so poorly thought out. It's such an interesting idea and so poorly thought out. I, I have two hot takes for this movie, okay? The first is that it's all one big advertisement for being a safe driver. I had the same thought. Holy fuck. <laughs> and the second is that it 
was originally supposed to be written as a rom-com where Ellis is an FBI agent and falls in love with a woman who can't falls age. in love with a woman who can't age. And then he finds her case. Yeah. Yo, I would, uh, I would, if that, that was, was a TV show, if it was a TV show, I would watch that. It'd be so good. Like, like a, but you like know a, what? I, I didn't write that as my pitch because I had just come up with it like 20 minutes before yeah. I called you, but like a romantic comedy TV show where the main character is Ellis and, and uh and adeline but it's it's basically about them like she's trying to fool him and he's trying to like get the real answers but like they're slowly falling in love but it's played much more like comedic rather than drama yeah like you can still have drama in there i'm thinking i'm thinking of something akin to the good place yeah where it's like like there's there's an, a, a very very strong continuing storyline but it's not and there's serious moments but it's a comedy yeah that's what i'm thinking like that tonally yeah it's but in the the whole time like i have in my notes here because i just i wrote it down so i wouldn't forget it yeah um but i had in my notes that like ellis would be struggling to do his job of mm-hmm. like bringing her in because she's a cold case and they tried to bring her in um and at the same time she's struggling with like should i tell him should i not tell mm-hmm, him and mm-hmm. ellis is like should i tell her i know should i not tell her I should know? i tell like, her that i'm undercover like maybe she, he she doesn't know that he's undercover like that there's right? there's some suspense there and yeah and it wouldn't be all like a self-involved conflict then yeah, yeah exactly and you could then bring there'd in- be a lot more there and so many more like potential like goofs and funny things oh, funny that could thing. happen and you bring in other characters too like you still have fleming Adeline's yeah. daughter be a thing and and how does that play out when it's her daughter but not actually her daughter but actually her daughter and then yeah. how does Ellis's family deal with it especially when you bring in the revelation that that and you could play with this you could have Adeline keep flashing back to where the time she almost married this this guy right but she never mm-hmm. talks about it she we only see it in flashback and because actors are different when we show up and and El- we've been introduced to Ellis's father a long, long time ago, William, because you know Ellis is an FBI agent, and so he goes home and he talks with his father, and all of this stuff happens, and we never put two and two together until uh, Adeline meets William, and immediately he's like, "What the like? It's Adeline!" And then if you're an audience member and that's a cliffhanger, like a season ender, you'd be like, "He fucking knows who she is." Because at this point, Ellis has only known her as Jenny. Yeah. And then all of a sudden, you're like, what the fuck? Like, one yeah. of the problems I think that this twist doesn't work is because um, the first time we meet William is the first time he goes, oh, it's Adeline. Right? But if, if he... Well, I mean, we've, we saw once him on the park bench with the, with the box. Yes, but I, I'm talking like the character... Or I mean, talking about Harrison Ford himself. Imagine if Ellis had interacted with him before. We became familiar with him as a character. And then all of a sudden we get this revelation where he's like, that's not Jenny. That's Adeline. Or he at least thinks it's Adeline. And we as an audience... And then it's a cliffhanger. Imagine like that's the end of the season. The, Adeline's decided she's going to be with, with Ellis. Even though she doesn't yeah. know he's undercover. And even though... Uh, you know, she's like, I'm going to tell him this weekend. I want to be with him. And then all of a sudden, you know, Ellis is like, these it's are my parents. And, and it's, it's just, just like, like oh, oh and you leave that as a cliffhanger? Yo, I would watch that. And yeah, and I think that especially because if it's a TV show, like a 45 minute episodes would be long. Maybe not. I would do 22 much, minute but, episodes. But even then, uh, <laughs> you still have so much time to play with. Yeah. Literally. Even if it was 12 both episodes. Both her life and if it was like, 12 all episodes, of the stuff that you could put in. Yeah. Right? You wind up with what? Like four hours of material? Okay, so there's our pitch right there. I don't want to pitch mine anymore. <laughs> That's a good pitch. I'm not going to lie. You wind up with four hours of material, 12, 22 episodes. There's season one. Is, is and you could see so much of her cool life as she's like out yeah. in Paris or France or whatever. Would you just do it all in flashbacks, in right? And yeah, yeah. Okay, one of the things I will talk about. One of the things that I really did like is, um, and, and I know this was done purposefully. Adeline is the way that she looks and the way that she dresses uh, in her everyday life is purposefully done to look like modern, but like vintage modern and very I love classy. It. I- that is my very like my top note right here oh. is just i love her modern outfits yes. and i wish that i was that type of woman who could dress what like the that heck does that mean that type of woman 
I've got a look. Yeah, but you could she change has your a look. look. I no, I would look like a completely different person then. That well, that's the point like, you're you making. You saw me when I showed up with the knitted sweater, and you're like, "Whoa!" <laughs> yeah, but but that's just because it's different from the look that you have. You can always change your look up. You can look any way you want to look, as long as you're comfortable with the way you look, right? I don't know. That's true. So when but, you say like she's the kind of woman who can look like that, they also do say that Adeline changes her looks every decade or so, right? When she moves yes. different places. But I do think that the reason that she looks this particular way is because they want to show this kind of like timeless this time period yeah this they want to show yeah. that she's very modern but the way she looks the way she dresses is very like old school vintage classy while still being like very modern it is yeah. um it's really good i think it, and her even the way she does her hair is like vintage classy like just super super it's really really so effective good. and well done the way she carries her purse is like yep i don't know like everything about it was really really well done um and it also just is Blake Lively is just a very attractive woman. <laughs> so yep. she can sort of get away with this, that kind of grace. And I think the movie does try to play with Blake Lively's looks, like the way she looks. Because a lot of this, she's a bit of a Mary Sue. Yeah. She she looks a certain way. Like literally every dude who's around her is like, that one's pretty. It's mine now. And that's yep. that's the basic thrust of this movie is Adeline doesn't age. Adeline is super pretty. Adeline doesn't want to fall in love with people. Everybody falls in love with Adeline. Yep. That's dumb. Funny how that happens. That's dumb, though. I know Blake Lively is very attractive, and the movie plays with that, and they do put her into some, like, absolutely superb costumes. Like, like some of the dresses she wears... Um, both like the fancy ones and otherwise the stuff when it's like in the middle of the 20s and the 30s oh. were like so cool with like the curls oh my goodness <laughs> yeah it looks so good it looks so good yeah it's uh, yeah i mean it, 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 it it's truly inspired how well they did did the costumes that's my biggest thing where mm -hmm. i was like we need to talk about this because it's it is really 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 well done they make the make yeah her feel like a really interesting character um i also will say when ellis says he's gonna get her flowers and he knows she's a librarian mm -hmm. and then sends her book titles that are all classic thought, books but names of flowers that went straight to my heart that's smooth as fuck <laughs> yeah <laughs> <laughs> like i was swooning i was like Whoo! yeah um i believe it the uh the but the problem that i have with ellis is he's also a mary sue except a male version so a I, okay, I also got some, like, major stalker vibes from he's, him in the first, like, 25, 30 minutes. That's exactly what I was going to say. He's a, definitely yeah. a Mary Sue as well, which we talked about. But he's so... He comes on way too strong. Yeah, and he's, like, holding the books hostage for a date with her. And that's not that's not cool. No, man. Like, somebody who's like, well, I'm not going to donate any of my, like, $5,000 worth of first edition books. Or 50000 whatever it was. If you... If I don't can't donate them directly to you because and if I, I can't saw get you a date with you. Yeah, and, because oh, this one so time bad. I saw you reading Braille on the street and thought that one's pretty. It's mine now. Yeah, that's the entire impetus for his wanting to donate books is because he wants to get closer to Adeline. That's fucking creepy. He comes yeah. on way too strong. There's a couple times where she says like, no, 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 not in so many words, which is probably a problem but she said you know she's easily anyone who has any social graces or even has very little social graces would be like that's clearly um like a not that you've been rebuked you've been pushed aside N no interest like it gets creepy it it's it's frustrating it gets creepy yeah especially when she's like you're like he, uh, she's on her way out and grabs the ta uh, the Oh my God, words. The cab. <laughs> yeah. And uh, and he's just like, well, how am I going to get in contact with you? And it's just like, when did she ever express yeah. interest in wanting to be in contact with you? Exactly. Yeah. And then uh, when he figures out where she lives because she didn't return a couple phone calls. And then winds up like going to her place to try and find her. Yeah. Like, that's not cool. And first of all, I don't even think she gave him her number. Uh, I think that was implied. I don't know. 
I don't think it. I think it was never set on screen. But you're right. It was I never thought that set she on did screen. ask, like, how did you get my number? How did you find out where I live? Mm, she, she says address. I don't know about phone number. I don't remember. I don't remember specifically. But I think I don't think that it. Well, phone number is not hard. Yeah. You could just literally start up Jenny Larson in a phone book, or True. or Google search it because this Actually, is 2015. I think. I think uh, San Francisco's in California, right? <laughs> well, they're in New York right now, aren't they? No, I thought they were in. Oh, maybe they okay, are wherever in San they were. Wherever I think they some are. certain maybe states right actually time. like it's a legal thing where you have to have your your, your phone, phone number in the in the phone book. Yeah, in the phone book. So, for those of you who don't know what a phone book is, because you're that young, <laughs> <laughs> it's a kind we still of get the phone book here. Yeah, it's a kind of directory where you used to be able to look up people's landlines. And if you don't know what a landline is, it's like a cell phone, but stuck to a wall. <laughs> um. <laughs> it's called, that's why it's called a landline. Yeah. Um, <laughs> anyway. Uh, yeah, I did feel like that was really, really, especially because when you, when you look back on it, you realize like William, when she first meets William, he comes across as like such a gentleman and sort of like lets her go like she's oh, a beautiful woman but i'll help her with her car lets her go and when she turns around yes he's excited but he never chased after her yeah and then when ellis does it it's it's like this is really 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 kind of creepy and i understand that the point of this is supposed to be like yeah but she has put up these walls and he wants to break down those walls and it's like yeah i don't know i would never do some of the things that he, like the lengths that he goes to to try and get get at her just because she's a special one like i'm sorry that's not okay so i want to bring this back to my the pitch that we just did together Mm. the the half pitch i don't know what to call it i guess it is a pitch sure our our working pitch currently yeah um i think the reason that i was more okay with it when i was watching it was because i thought maybe he actually was like undercover like i was oh. so suspicious of him because he was so adamant but that would make and much sh- more we had sense. seen her almost get taken away by the fbi yeah. so i was like oh okay this is a, this, this could be the main conflict yeah. but then it was just that he was a creepy dude <laughs> that's really interesting because i think it would be interesting if he works for the fbi but doesn't know about who adeline is He's just like, there's this woman named Jenny Larson who's been assigned to me who basically we don't have any history of her beyond a certain point. Like about mm-hmm. 10 years back, we don't have any history of her. She just showed up. Yeah. And so he's like, I'm going to find out who this person is, has to get close with her. And then this sort of like stalkerish behavior becomes a little bit more acceptable because we as the audience would know that he's pushing the limits of what's acceptable. Because it's his Because job. it's his job. Uh, that's what i was expecting yeah and then they just ruined it because the whole like the first 25 minutes i'm like oh this is gonna be like a spy espionage kind of story because that's what it seemed like and it made her out to be like that because she can speak all these languages and she's been running from the law for 60 years and blah 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 i don't know if i would say that it was gonna be a spy or espionage i would still keep it it seemed like it where she like walks in and she gets the fake id and everything and she's really good at being like oh you don't slip up because his name is on the thing i i I would still keep it uh grounded in a drama i would too but i don't think like i don't think that you're wrong like you definitely could have some spy themes in there or like noir themes a little bit like you just just, love the noir just a little sprinkle right (laughs) yeah um yeah I don't know. He comes off way too, way too strong. Um, yeah. I don't know. It's this. I mean, clearly she has a type. She's fallen in love for father and then son. <laughs> and they fall in love at like first sight. She falls in love with first sight with both of them. That that scene actually where he walks in the room and their eyes meet. I ha- that scene frustrates so me cliche. so much. It frustrates it's me so, so much. Yeah. Because it's just, it's just like, okay, but why? Like, what has he done to set himself apart? Certainly attraction can be a thing when you see someone who's very attractive. You, oh, like, that person is very good looking. But would your eyes lock and you would you stare at each other for five seconds straight? And then would you run into an elevator just because an attractive woman is leaving a party without introducing herself? No. Yeah, honestly. That's creepy. If, if throughout the course of the evening you came up and started a conversation... That might would be like so at the beginning there's sort of this uh this young gentleman who shows up and starts talking with Adeline and her friend Regan 
the piano mm-hmm. player, uh, the way that that guy approaches is much more socially acceptable than anything that Ellis does. Yes. And he's supposed to be this schmuck, like this Joe yeah. Schmo, who is clearly interested in Adeline, but will never... Like, whereas an audience, we're led to believe, like, oh, she's not interested in him. He's just supposed to be the schmuck. And then in walks Ellis, and she's like, who is that? You would think after 109 years of being alive that you'd have seen a lot of attractive men. I would think so. And you would have seen a lot of non-attractive men. And you would have seen a lot of attractive men with very non-attractive attributes and features. Yes. And so, you know, there would be a little bit more caution about falling in love at yeah. first sight. I also think it would have been interesting if they, because they talk about how Adeline can't change. At least age is what I mean. Because mm-hmm. we know she can change. She can learn new things. But I think it would have been interesting if, you know, Adeline is how old? 20 some odd when she 29. stops aging? 29. So, I mean, a 29 year old woman is still going to have a sex drive. Yeah. Let's talk about that. Let's let's explicitly bring that up because then she can be like, you know, Adeline might be alone. Um but, but she doesn't have to be she doesn't alone. have to be like alone alone, which is why I think when she has sex with Ellis it makes sense. How long yeah. has she gone without being intimate with someone? But like why not explicitly say that? Why not say Adeline, you know, is still a 29-year-old woman. She she wants to feel wanted. She wants she has desire. Yeah. You know, to me, it would have made far more sense if she'd had a one night stand with Ellis, a very attractive man, very successful, eloquent. They maybe speak at the party. She winds up being like this, oh, this guy, maybe there's something here. She could flirt and be like, actually, it's my birthday because it is right. Midnight yep. on New Year's is her birthday. It's her birthday. Oh, they flirt, have a good time. They go back to her place or his place, probably his place because she's very defensive. They go back to to his place. You know, she feels gets her rocks off feels desired and wanted and then goes back to being herself meanwhile we're left with ellis being like who is this this jenny girl yeah that's how i would play the first episode yeah of our ongoing pitch (laughs) that would be great right actually that that makes a lot more sense it really does that's how i would play it and he accidentally winds up stumbling across this woman who the very to be person in, that he's supposed to be investigating yeah yeah and can't get her out of his head yeah yeah i don't know there's i mean there's a lot of things you could do with this like i said the idea is very smart the execution mm-hmm. is frustrating not yeah. bad not i wouldn't even say that this movie is bad it's just frustrating yeah there really is no conflict your idea of, of ellis being the fbi agent it's really, really, really interesting. Okay, this is there's a couple of pet peeves of mine, but if you have some before we get into pitches, if you have any other pet peeves, then um or or goods as well. Okay, we haven't talked about it, but I cried because <laughs> of course you did. It should be a criminal offense depicting any form of oh uh, when her dog dies, dog <laughs> die like pets, but dying. the dog. It, it, it's a criminal offense. Why would you make me feel that? Okay, well, there's a, I do actually think there's a good reason for it in this movie. I understand that there's a good reason for it, but why? Because it makes, it makes Adeline feel more vulnerable and lonely, which makes her more likely to go and reconsider her relationship with Ellis. Oh, see, I thought, it, I thought the reason, personally, to me, was like that comparison of oh a dog's life is so short compared yes, exactly. to a regular person exactly right? but it also makes but then her a regular feel person's life is so short compared to to, to adeline's yes no you're yeah. you're absolutely 100 percent right and we see how many dogs she's had in the past through the photo album but i also think that there is that that that, that the loss of the animal of her friend not just an animal the loss of her friend is something that she that makes her feel lonely and vulnerable now all of a sudden someone who's been with her for a couple of years is no longer there. And I think yeah. that as a motivator, you're right. But as a motivator, now she has like a reason to try and seek out companionship. Well, that's just rude using the poor dog. Dogs get used that way all the time. Which is stupid. Again, criminal offense. <laughs> you are so upset right now. I am. Okay. I love my pets. I, uh, I understand. I lost, I lost a cat. I, I feel the I- same way. 
I've lost more than one cat. <laughs> I've only ever been allowed to have one cat, so. Oh, um, well, that's really sad. I'm sorry to hear that. <laughs> so for me, part of, part of, I had this funny idea. So you know when she like picks up her phone when Ellis tries to call and she's driving at the very, very end? Mm-hmm. I thought it would have been, and then she gets hit by the truck. I thought it would have been hilarious if she gets hit by the truck and the screen just blacks out and the entire movie was like an hour and a half PSA to not be on the phone while driving. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, or to like drive drive safe carefully in the and snow. Watch the road. Yeah, watch the, the road. Yeah. Any Canadian will tell you that you can drive in snow if you're careful. Uh, what I can't believe is that that truck, that's like an actual tow truck, yeah, backed up and went. Oh, she's dead. Bye. Oh, people do that. You'd be Which surprised. Which is so bad because you can get charged with vehicular manslaughter. Right. Really. Yeah. You can because you've killed someone. You didn't mean to. That's why it's manslaughter. It's not murder. It's not premeditated. Even though she pulled out in front of this truck. Uh, it depends. It would depend on the circumstances. It's hard to tell. If she pulled into the other lane without looking if it was safe, then it would be her fault. That would is her fault because she didn't look. But we don't know where the lanes are, right? So it's hard to tell right. exactly what happened there. Um. If she was stopped in the middle of the road and wound up getting hit, it would still be her fault, especially if her blinkers weren't on, right? Her four ways weren't on. Right. Because... But she, we saw she pulled yeah, over. Yeah, she pulled over. She was- so if she was doing a turn and she did all her signals and this truck just hit her, he could be charged depending on how the, the court gets out. He would be charged, maybe not uh, um, convicted, but he would be probably charged with vehicular manslaughter if she died. So it's actually better for him to bail. It's not the right thing to do, but... That way, nobody would ever know that it was that person, right? If it was me, I'd be pulled over, hyperventilating. Sobbing, yeah. I think so, <laughs> like, too, right? You'd be like, oh, fuck, oh, fuck, oh, fuck. Um, like, I wouldn't, yeah. But, uh, so I also, um, this part really, really, really ticked me off. And it has to do, again, with what we were talking about with uh, with just... Um, how much of a Mary Slew, Mary Sue slash... I know, I don't know what I was trying to say there. How much of a Mary Sue <laughs> slash how... Um, how much of Blake Lively's aesthetic beauty is played off in Adeline Bowman's aesthetic beauty because at the very end she like looks in the mirror and pulls a gray hair out of her the side of her ear implying Mm -hmm. that she is now aging again which is fine but I just hated that it was like oh I'm aging I'm growing old and there's this gray hair which she holds in between her perfectly manicured fingers after pulling it off of her like incredibly well made up beautiful face it's irritating yep like i don't know she has no flaws but at the same time it's just like oh a gray hair huh. i but i think the idea was that that she's happy to be aging yeah but well yeah it is yes. because now she can grow old with the one she loves yeah well or the one she loves is son <laughs> yikes um but the idea i think uh really ticked me off because it sort of showed that like Adeline's growing older. She has one gray hair and yet she holds it in her perfectly manicured fingers off of her incredibly beautiful face. And she still doesn't have any flaws. She's going to age beautifully. Yeah, exactly. So like, what are her actual flaws? What, what makes her an interesting person outside of the fact that she doesn't age? Cause guess what? She ages now, which makes you boring, right? There's nothing special about you again. That one's pretty. It's mine now. Yeah. Ugh. That's so frustrating. Because this movie yep. could do so much more with this premise if it had more interesting characters. Uh, and that's... To, I don't think... I want to be clear. I don't think that's... um, That's uh, Blake Lively's fault or Harrison Ford's fault or... I don't think that's anyone's... Of the actors' faults in the story. I think the writing is just kind of... Uh, trite. At least character-wise. Because the... the yep. The instances, the actual, like, drama is quite good. It's just, it doesn't land if the characters don't mean anything. Yeah. Should we get into some pitches? Sure. I want to start with mine. Okay. Why? <laughs> you came right out of date with that just, one. Because it, I, I did it last night. I did mine last night. And then I came up with something better, and I'm not 100% pleased with this one but i think that it's somewhat better than the movie but okay. i think i still missed a lot hit so, me with it i don't hit me know with it. okay so we actually start at the vet's office we see a woman who we know is going to be jenny or uh adeline 
Um, she walks in with the dog, and we see, um, and then we see a close up on her driving. Mm-hmm. Um, da, 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 da. So then we get like a quick shot, like a few quick shots of her bringing home a puppy, um, training it, and then all of a sudden it's old and ill. And then she, and then we get another, like, these are all, like, really quick shots, like, very, yeah, yeah. like, choppy, right? Um, and then she opens the door to her apartment and walks in alone. Aw. Bam. You're just right? trying to get the, the dog death out of the way quickly? Out of the way quickly, <laughs> but I still think that it is a necessary part, which yeah. is unfortunate, but I don't, you know, warm everyone up to the dog first. Um, okay, so we see her packing and preparing to move, um, and as... As she's packing up, you can see, like, she's got a lot of old oddities, and she uses them like it's all second nature. Like, she's obviously had them for quite a while, and she still uses all of them regularly. She goes to put food in the food, like, in the dog's bowl, and then breaks down. Aww. And then we cut to morning. She gets up, goes to work. Um, I like the tacky, taxi scene. Tacky? <laughs> The taxi scenes. I'm I'm really struggling with taxi oh, oh, and cab Oh, where she like today. tells tells the cabbie where to like take her, where to go, and they yeah. joke about like her taking his job. Yeah. Like I thought that was funny. It's it's a cute scene because it clearly shows that she knows she's lived there forever. Yeah. right, like hundred hundred years. Um, she gets to the library and she keeps mostly to herself, but then she like goes ahead and does whatever the people tell her that she needs to do. So like, she has to take care of some old film reels for shipping because they're going to get them digitized. Um, and so one of her coworkers, Ellis, is coworker, not this random rich dude. Got it. Um, is helping her with the job. He's like a new hire or something like that. I don't know. And he's like trying to talk to her while she's busy trying to reminisce looking at all these old tapes. Um, and like we can get as the tapes reel through we'll see like the tape and then we'll get like a cut to like her in that time time, when she gets the news of whatever event that was or her like at a party in a similar time like that'd be so cool it would be really really cool um so anyways ellis is trying to talk to her she's not really reciprocating because she's obviously like busy you know thinking about the past while also you know she's upset about her dog um this, this is a very choppy movie in my brain, apparently. Um, so then we chop to lunch. She's at, uh, she's out at a restaurant with her daughter. Um, and they are celebrating her birthday a day early. Uh, and as in we're celebrating Jenny slash Adeline's, Adeline's birthday, birthday a day early. On New Year's Eve instead of New Year's Day. Yeah. Um, and we we'll find out eventually that it's her daughter but at first it just seems like an old woman who could be like her grandmother family member yeah yeah um so yeah they're talking about the dog and and um uh what is her daughter's name fleming fleming thank you and fleming is like yeah i've i've always thought that getting a dog would be too sad because i'd outlive it Mm. and then there's like an awkward awkward pause right and then um Fleming is like, wait, no, mom, I didn't mean it like that. <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> and Adeline is just like, well, yeah, you know, I didn't really plan on becoming not immortal. Ageless. Unaging. Yeah. You know, after having a child. That wasn't in the plan. So then again, right after that, we chop back to work. Like, it's very, very choppy. <laughs> So back at work, um, she's still working her way through the reels. Um, and she might manages to find a tape that was from like the Golden Gate Bridge incident. Um, so we see like her at the funeral. Yep. Um, playing with like a wedding ring on her hand. And then we flash back to uh, modern day and we see that she doesn't have the wedding ring anymore. Ooh. Because now Fleming has it. Um, and Ellis is like, you know, we've been watching all the really depressing news reels. How about we find something a little more enjoyable? (laughs) Um, so he's like just trying to cheer her up. And Mm. then, um, I don't know. They find the one where it's like World War II is ending and there's like the big party in the street. Yeah. Um, I'm really focusing a lot on the, 
the intro here because the rest I kind of kept somewhat the same. That's okay. Um, but yeah, so they they get through it, and he's just like, you know, I think that you need some company because I, like he, I, I guess she tells him that her, her dog, dog died. died. Yeah. And he's just like, just you know, come out with me for dinner. Like it won't be anything fancy, not a date. Don't worry about it. Because he's like trying to be really like he's trying to play it cool, but it. really he's like, yo, this woman. He's is... like, oh my god, a yeah. date, right? Um. And then from there, the rest of the we movie. start getting like the cascading of yeah. like they're starting to fall in love, and um, she's still getting ready to move. She's like, "Well, I'm moving at the end of the month," and he's just like, "Oh, but don't move." Um, and then yeah, so we get that, and I that's like the majority of kind of the middle of now. She's like, "Okay, do it." Uh, there's like actual conflict there because she's like i don't want to tell him my secret i'm already set to move what do i do um and then ellis asks her to go with him across the country for a weekend to go to a cousin's wedding and surprising herself she ends up agreeing to go and then immediately calls her daughter to be like fleming help i'm going to cancel (laughs) (laughs) because why did i do this to myself (laughs) um so she like flip flops about like canceling like should I go should I not um, and her her daughter is just like just go for it you know you don't you don't deserve to be alone just because of something that happened to you eighty years ago or whatever uh oh no seventy years ago um and then her daughter encourages uh her to tell the truth as well. But she's like, no, I don't think I'll go that far. Like, I think I'll just stay with him for a little bit and then I'll leave, as she's always done. Yeah. So they go on the trip and they end up staying at a a bread and breakfast, a bed and (laughs) breakfast, a bread and breakfast, (laughs) um, near where the wedding is happening. Um, and they take a walk around town. They meet Ellis's parents and go have dinner. And this whole time, you can tell that Jenny slash Adeline is, like, really out of her comfort zone. Like, she's just really, like, agitated. Is William still? No. Oh, okay. No tunnel buddies. It was too weird for me. <laughs> um, so, Ellis is just like, oh, well, maybe she just doesn't travel very well. Like, maybe she's just nervous because she's not much of a traveler. Yeah. Um, but anyway, so they get ready. They go to the wedding. Um, and Ellis, while a little, feeling a little good from the alcohol is just like, and from the atmosphere, cause you know, weddings, um, it's like, no, I don't know. What do you mean by weddings? I think you've probably been, ha- have you, how many weddings have you been to? A lot. You forget. I'm that much older like than you. I've been to like two in recent times. Okay. So I'm that much older than you. So most of my friends are married. True. Um, it'll anyways, happen you- to you. <laughs> I it already is so many of my friends are having kids and I'm like yeah, what is gross. going on anyway sorry for interrupting anyway, <laughs> so he says something about like knowing what he wants in life uh but he has no idea what Jenny wants because they've never talked about it um and Jenny just kind of like laughs it off and then shortly after this very old man comes up to to them and is just like hey you look like this woman who i was going to propose to and then she left me and she's like oh haha i think you have the wrong person but then because he's like drunk Uh, because it's a wedding and it's party and whatever people get get crazy uh he's like very adamant about it and he's just like no what was her name Uh, ada ada something and he's just she's just like i really don't know who you're like don't know what you're talking about like just leave me alone i'm just trying to enjoy the night with right Mm -hmm. whatever and then uh he just keeps pushing and she's like okay well i'm just gonna go get some air so ellis is just like yeah sure like i'll I'll wait right here and she ends up just walking back to the to the bed and breakfast Mm -hmm. um and she just starts packing. She's like, no, this... She just, like, got cold feet yep. immediately, yep. right? So, Ellis just uh, is like, okay, she's taking a really long time. And then she, he can't find her anywhere, so he, like, goes to chase after her. Um, and then he, like, he just figures, like, she probably just went back to the bed, bed and breakfast. breakfast yep. Like, got tired or something. Um, and he manages to, like 
just barely miss her seeing the taillights of his car pulling out the driveway. Um, and then he starts trying to get a cab or a ride back home. And so the party's basically over and his parents come back to find him like looking very distressed because they couldn't find him at the party. So same mm-hmm. thing. They're like, okay, maybe he just went back to the B&B. Um, and it's just like, well, maybe you just need to wait it out. Like, I don't, there's nothing we can do. We don't know where she went. She's not answering her calls. Mm -hmm. Like, right. Um, so then we jump over to Jenny slash Adeline and she calls her daughter over Bluetooth. Oh, she's driving, right? Okay. She's driving. So it's over Bluetooth. It's fine. And she's, like, in a panic, like, I left, I couldn't control myself, I just did it, like, I wasn't thinking, I don't know what to do, and her daughter is just like, just turn around, just go back, like, don't, (laughs) why are you doing this to yourself again? Um, Just tell him, tell him, and maybe you guys can work something out or figure it out, maybe medicine can fix you, I don't know, you've never tried it before. Um, And she, like, pulls over, and she, like runs through the whole like a really quick like run through of the evening with her daughter and then and then her daughter's like this is the best time to tell him like just why you freaked out Mm. and you know that this man maybe was someone that you knew in the past and maybe you just recognize him because he's so old (laughs) right (laughs) and like he's he's got this weird like thing in his mind now of like why did she leave after this man was so adamant about this right so like he's gonna figure something out like something is weird about you anyways so she's like okay fine i can't keep running like this is my chance to to tell him because he's already got this old man's words in his head so she turns around and this is where i really wanted to play with time the most Mm -hmm. because before we would have all those flashbacks and fun stuff because whatever i didn't want to go too in depth into that because that would take me an hour probably um so she's she turns around I'm like mimicking this and yeah, I keep yeah. bumping Alyssa's my mic. Alyssa's very excited. She keeps bumping her mic. <laughs> so she turns around and then I got to actually like read my notes here or else I'm going to mess this up. She turns around and suddenly we're transported back into the 1920s ish where Jenny is driving on a similar hill and notices it's snowing, mm-hmm. but it's a different car. Yeah. And she's dressed a little differently. Yeah. Um,. She's distracted by the snow and ends up rolling down a hill into a lake while she's underwater. Um, or while she's rolling. Yeah, while she's rolling, her outfit changes and she's back into like modern dress. Oh, so it's like it's like you're going back and forth between these two different events as though they're like happening at the same time, but they're split by a hundred years or whatever. Yeah. Yeah. So then she's rolling, um, and then it kind of flips back and forth. Lightning hits the old car while it's in the water. At the same time, paramedics shock, shock her uh, in in modern day. Yeah. Her eyes open and she's brought to the hospital. Cool. Yeah. And I figured it would be really cool to have it so that, you know, like the really creepy like hospitals where like the light flickers or something. Yeah. And then like have it so that like she's being pushed through in, in olden days and then the light flickers and suddenly and it's, it's like, a modern oh, hospital. Oh, that's really cool. Yeah. Um. So then she opens her eyes and she's like, where am I? But then Alice and her daughter are both there. Um, but, you know, her daughter's just like, ah, oh, granddaughter, oh, you're okay. Yeah. Right? Um, and then Fle- uh, Fleming? Fleming. I don't know why I'm having such a hard time with it's her name. It's a really strange name. Yeah, you would think I'd remember it, though. Um, so Fleming is just like, I'll just leave you two for a minute. And then Jenny just goes through the whole thing. And I actually want to see Ellis's face when he <laughs> finds out. Um, we'll see his face. Yeah. Um, yeah. And then Fleming comes back and Ellis is just like, so what do I, how do I, how does this work? And then we get a cut and they're getting ready for something fancy. I don't know what, because they seem like that type of people and rich people. people. And Jenny steps in front of a mirror and she's like, you know, almost 70 years ago, I noticed that I hadn't even gained a wrinkle. And now today I'm glad to find a gray hair. Like she actually says it out loud. And that's the end. Nice. 
It's yeah, not I feel the greatest like you get, pitch that I've ever done. I think that I reworking. liked the one that yeah. I came up with 20 minutes before our Actually, call, but whatever. I'm really attached to this one now, the one that we've know, been slowly coming up with. I wish we'd yeah. thought about it before, but my pitch is, well, you can say it with me now. This should have been a TV show. Yeah. Um, so my pitch is actually a TV miniseries because, of course, it is. It's also not that great. I'm kind of very attached to our comedy slash undercover <laughs> FBI story. It's we gotta, we gotta stop coming up with cooler pitches. Well, sometimes when you spend some of. time thinking about it or talking about it out loud, you're like, "That's what it is," right? As yeah. opposed to when we do this on our own. But uh, so my story starts out uh, with the first episode in the. Er- it's actually the like the 1850s. I wanted Adeline to be older. Oh, like so, super old. Yeah, so it's actually the 1850s, and she's a young woman in San Francisco. She meets an um, meets a gentleman who works on not on the uh, Golden Gate Bridge because it's not built yet, but he's an engineer who works on like high rise buildings. Mm-hmm. You know, high rise for that era, and yep. uh, um, you know we see them courting and eventually fall in love and get married and have a child, and then uh, we get a bit of Adeline's life where she's just like a regular woman in the time period. Uh, she's not particularly smart or outstanding, but she is uncommonly pretty. And when her daughter is 66 years old, Adeline's husband winds up dying, and she's heartbroken. Um, uh, Being the romantic, she basically says she doesn't ever want to fall in love again. Uh, At this point, Mm -hmm. Adeline is on her way home, and she winds up in the lake, and we see all this happen in the past. Like, none of this happens in the present. Um, So the doctors tell Adeline to call if anything unusual comes up as a follow-up. But, of course, nothing unusual does come up until some years go by and Fleming is graduating from high school and she uh, wants to go, like, off to college, which is unheard of at the time for young ladies. But because uh, Adeline had managed to collect insurance from her father's death, they can afford to send Fleming to uh, a college for girls. Um, Mm -hmm. But Adeline is also stopped by her friend and it basically plays out like Adeline looks like her daughter's sister like so that whole thing plays out and adeline realizes that something is like weird with with her going on but she doesn't really know what so she opts instead to move to the the same town that her daughter does when her daughter goes off to the all girls college so time passes and adeline realizes that she's really not aging and everyone else like including her daughter this freaks her out And so she decides uh, she's going to take a clerical job at the hospital where her daughter works as a nurse. Uh, Her daughter is now probably like 10 years older than her by looks. So like 30s, 35-ish. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, And um, uh, maybe not even that old, but it doesn't really matter. But can't um, she takes a clerical job at the hospital and she can't seem to find anything wrong with her because she's not an actual doctor. But meanwhile, Fleming has is basically like uh, works at the hospital, and she started seeing a doctor named Eric. And Adeline continues to do research, and Fleming wants to tell Eric. They're starting to get serious. Fleming wants to tell Eric what's been going on, because I would say that they're probably the same age. That makes more sense. Fleming yeah. wants to tell Eric what's going on, and thinks that um, that he can help, and knows that. Like, Eric knows that something is going on, but but they won't say anything. So the two of them talk, Fleming and and Adeline, and they opt to tell Eric um, that she has, like, a degenerative issue, because that's technically true, except it's a regenerative issue. Um, Yep. But they're not going to tell her about the aging just to see what they can find out. So Eric agrees to work with Adeline and offers to run some tests on her, and he's genuinely interested in finding out what's going on. Uh, but during one of the tests, Fleming isn't there, and Eric makes a move on Adeline. <gasps> and it's been like, I mean, 20 years since, maybe almost 30 years since Adeline's husband has passed. And Adeline feels, she's like, it was nice to be wanted in that moment. Oh, no. And so the two of them wind up having sex. Oh, no. And afterwards, Eric is enamored with Adeline. Adeline's not interested. She's just like, no, I just wanted, like, it felt good, right? She's not interested. She's like, I don't worry about being a, ma- a wor- I don't worry about being a ruined woman because I'm going to live forever, <laughs> basically. And she's already had a daughter. Yeah, and I've already had a daughter. Like, it's fine. But Eric, like, Eric is now enamored with Adeline and um, Fleming finds out and is devastated because she thought she was going to be with Eric. Turns out Eric only started seeing Fleming to try and get close to Adeline that's bad and adeline is basically like i can't be with somebody who's gonna like like i know that you're a 29 year old woman but i like i thought you were my mom as well and so she's like i don't want anything to do with you uh and so she leaves um 
Eric, in order to try to get Adeline to stay, has been like, I'm really going to help you out. Like, he's dead set that he's going to help her out and that she'll be grateful. And so he had sent some of the tests off to a lab and the FBI takes an interest <gasps> and she's taken away. Oh, no. That's the end of episode one. Okay. So episode two opens up with Adeline with the FBI. And it turns out that she's uh, they're, they're They are interested in her health because they've never seen anything like it. But they don't know that she can't age. And so they like basically for a year, they keep her not locked away, but under close scrutiny where she has to live on a military base. And and they treat her with respect, but they do poke and, poke and prod and test on her. Um, what they do know is that for some reason, Adeline is not aging and that there are a few people uh, who want the key to figure out how this works for medicine purposes and lots of other purposes. Um, and there are a few superiors who like want to do more serious testing, things like vivisections and, mm-hmm. and, and Adeline is like, whoa, like we can't, like, I don't want any permanent damage or anything like that. Like I still have to live potentially forever with whatever you do to me. So yeah. this has serious consequences. So there's a young officer named John McCormick who is um, basically put in, in charge of Adeline. And he's like her. he also advocates for her and tries to make sure that nothing serious will happen. However, he's unable to convince the his superiors to keep Adeline unharmed because they think for the greater good they could basically find out what's wrong with her, right? And they think it's her duty to actually do this. So Don, John McCormick tells Adeline... Um, what's going to happen uh and that he's and that she's like okay like i guess i have to resign myself to this but what she actually does is she plans uh to get out of it by seducing one of john's superiors and then leverages his abuse of power against the superior because Mm. he basically like has now had sex with her and john of course when he finds out helps her out and they manage to get her out into the real world where she's not going to be contained her anymore and they can they they're like we're going to continue to to do tests and keep in contact with you but we want you to live your life normally and we want you we'll even help you review we you what you have to keep your age a secret so we, government will actually help you relocate and move every couple of years in order to keep this a secret because we can't have this kind of thing getting out until we can prove why or what's going on but she is allowed yeah. out and that's the end of that episode Um, Oh, and John McCormick becomes her handler. So he basically is her like liaison between the FBI and and her regular life. Episode three consists entirely of Adeline meeting William. And that all plays out the same way. We see like her hand get cut and she's and he stitches it back up. We see them spend time together and we see like Adeline might be truly happy again. Um, And she's like thinking about. um, But she's thinking about actually telling. Uh william who she is um and he he's already at this point an astronomer and he's like if i ever find something i'll name it after you right she goes by the name della by now uh so when william proposes adeline actually says yes and they get engaged but she hasn't told him her secret but she's gonna ask john mccormick if it's okay and then um adeline gets a call from her daughter and Fleming is now an old woman, and it looks like she's going to pass away. Oh, no. And so um, she goes to meet uh, uh, Fleming and is basically like, what, like, like what's happening? And her daughter's like, you know, I'm, I'm dying, but I wanted to see you one last time. And Adeline is distraught because she realizes everything and everyone she ever loved, she's going to wind up outliving. And so she had called a meeting to ask John about telling uh william Mm -hmm. and um william or william's old school he has he's like been waiting to like ask her to marry him and is treating her with respect because he doesn't know anything so the two of them haven't had sex um because that i just thought that would be weird so um uh so yeah she takes this meeting with john mccormick and is basically like yo this is what's happening with my life like i thought i was ready to like tell william but i just don't feel like i'm ready and he's like oh i'm so sorry you feel that way like what are you going to do about about all this and she's like i don't know and the two of them embrace as friends but they wind up having sex oh my god so adeline goes to visit um yeah we did all that um she tries to to she tries Fleming is basically like I would love to see you get married and she tries Adeline's like okay and she tries to move up the date of the wedding so that she can get married before her her daughter dies 
and William agrees to it. But when John shows up, basically he's like, I, um, I can't be your handler anymore. Like we crossed a line and yep. like, I just, I'm, I called in for a transfer. I'm being replaced. And William is like, yo, who the fuck is this guy? And why do you saying you're having a handler? And before Adeline can explain her whole thing, William basically finds out that Adeline cheated on her and he calls off the wedding or cheated on him and calls off the wedding. So Adeline decides she can't let people in because she, she basically, whenever she feels lonely or vulnerable, she winds up fucking it up. Right. That's what happened. Quite with, literally. That's what happened with Fleming. And that's what happened with William. So she's like, I'm going to live my life like alone and I'm going to make the most of it. And she's like, maybe I'll get a puppy. And then we're introduced to, introduced to Adeline's new handler, who's a female officer named Alexandra Cortez. Okay. Episode four opens. It's like 50 years later. It's in present day. Adeline is living in New York, not San Francisco, but is visited by Alexandra. The two of them are now friends. Alexandra has been kept on in order to keep Adeline, like, stable. So even though Alexandra's, like, 70, <laughs> um, mm-hmm. she's been kept because they want to make sure that Adeline has like some stability in her life because people just wind up passing away anyway. Right. But the two of them have become over these 50 years, the two of them have become friends in a lot of ways. Um, And Alexandra basically talks about, or sorry, Adeline talks about how like she was at this event and was, uh, was saw someone and was like, I haven't felt that way since my first husband. It was like, I was struck by lightning. Right. And, and they sort of joke around, and then she says, actually, I was struck by lightning once. And Alexandra is like, wait, what? She's like, yeah, I was in a car accident. And Alexandra's like, no, I know about the car accident. I've read your file. Like, we've been friends. You never said anything about lightning. And she's like, yeah, that's, I think, what woke me up. Like, I I just got swam out of the pool. And Alexandra's like, yo, this is information we needed to know, like, years ago. How did you miss this? Like, and she's, 80 years yeah. ago. <laughs> How did you not tell us about this? And Adeline's like, I don't know. I just sort of remembered it right now when I saw, um, when I saw this this Ellis dude for the first time, mm-hmm. and 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 Alexandra's like, okay, all right, well, um, so, but the reason Alexandra has visited is because she's telling that Adeline that it's time to for her to move again. She's going to be oh, moved no. to a new city, and yeah. and Adeline's like, I know it's time, but I'm tired of being alone, and I'm tired of being tired. But there's nothing else they can do about it. Um, yeah, so that all happens. So uh, most most of this, the rest of this episode would be like her and Ellis falling in love again. And the whole thing would play out like she knows she's moving. She wants to be in love, but she can't be in love. And finally, the episode ends with her agreeing to meet Ellis's parents. So episode five consists of her meeting Ellis's family. And in the party, we find out that Ellis's father is William from episode four. But I would have it at the party. Like he can't, he can't quite, he's like, I know this woman from somewhere. Yeah. And he can't place it. And then all of a sudden he's like, it's Adeline. And he places at the party and he finds out because the scar on her hand and it would be like super intense. And he guesses that something fucky is going on, something to do with why she needed a handler and the scar. But she leaves and leaves a note for Ellis and is driving away because, you know, she's like, people can't find out. The FBI told me people can't find out. And she gets a text and picks up the phone and sees that Alexandra wants to call her immediately. It's like, call me back when you get this. And while she's reading the the text, she gets hit by a a, a drunk driver. Okay. Um, and that's the end of the episode. Okay. And it's a PSA. That's the whole. No, no, the no, no. Whole I'm joking. Is- <laughs> episode, so episode uh, six, the last episode, Adeline wakes up in the hospital, and Ellis is freaking out, and she can't tell him anything, and he leaves in frustration. However, Alexandra shows up, smooths things over with the medical staff because she has some like weird medical stuff still. You know, the fact that she has like zero medical records and if they do any tests, they'll be like, there's something really wrong with her telomeres and and regenerative yeah. issues. Um, so she uh, Alexandra clears that up with the staff and then she tells, you know, because we, we learned that this might have something to do with cold water electrolysis that might be able to undo this aging thing. If we can replicate it properly, we may be able to undo this aging thing. However, there's no guarantee that it'll work. In fact, there's the possibility that putting you in cold water until you're hypothermic and then running that much voltage through you would kill you. Might just kill you. Yeah. yeah. So the episode would mostly consist of Adeline struggling with struggling with the possibility of her own depth, death and coming to terms with mortality. And she can't tell anyone about what's going on, but she's sort of trying to keep things working with Ellis. And the only other person she can talk to other than Alexandra happens to be William. 
And so, because he knows Cause he by knows. this point, right? He's figured yeah. it out. So he shows up and the two of them are like, it's it's night and he like asks her to, she asks him to come out on a walk. And the two of them are looking up at the stars and the moon. And he's she's like, this is this whole thing I'm dealing with. Like I could die, but I kind of really want to be with Ellis. Like for, for the first time, I feel like that way. I want to be with Ellis. And he's like, what you're dealing with is something that everybody deals with when they grow old. You have to come to terms with your mortality. You're going to die. For the first time in a long time, you've had to come to grips with this. You've never died. So you either do the test and possibly die during the test, and or you wind up aging again because it works, or it doesn't work. Either way, she's like, either way, I have to try something. And so she like resigns herself that she's going to do it. And when she realizes this, they're looking up at the stars and the moon and she screams the moon. Mm-hmm. And William is like, what? And she's like, the meteor, the one you named after me was supposed yeah. to come so close to the earth. What if it hit the moon? And that's why it never showed up. Cause, okay. cause his math was supposed to be correct. And and it and he like well that doesn't make any sense so he looks at it he forgot to factor in the placement of the moon when the asteroid was coming close to the Earth and it turns out that the asteroid did hit the moon and it caused an impact that caused some tidal issues that whole summer that same summer that Adeline was it was snowing in Sonoma County California where Adeline slipped on the snow and wound up uh, basically her whole age thing happened and it all happened yeah. because of this meteor that was named after her that never showed up because it had already crashed into the moon yeah so i just thought that was like this really kind of cool roundabout way where like the meteor that incidentally caused the butterfly effect that made her not age was would be retrospectively named after her and the reason it didn't show up is because it had already like the math was sound william's math was sound but he'd forgotten about the moon um, I like that. Yeah, and and sort of this very romantic kind of tie tie in. Um, anyway, William is vindicated. Adeline decides to get the test, uh, and it, it works. And she wakes up, but nothing has changed. And okay. but Adeline is like, doesn't matter. And she decides that she's going to live the life the way that she wants, even if she loses Ellis. And five years later, the the pair are planning on leaving for a party for Adeline's birthday, and she notices a gray hair. I like that. And that's the end. Yeah. I like that a lot. And it's not a PSA for driving while texting. It's not a PSA for driving safe. Yeah. But still, drive safe. Um, Definitely. Yeah. Uh, Yeah. I I just, I, I, in mine, Adeline is much more promiscuous. Yes. But I also kind of. I noticed. Yeah. (laughs) I, I also wanted to do that because I sort of wanted her to, I wanted to explore the idea of her being lonely and desire being something that she wanted, but that she felt like because she did, couldn't have her first husband, that desire was a way to like alleviate the loneliness of choosing not to be in love. And so she like purposefully fucks up any of her like long-term relationships, like with Fleming, with William, with, with John McCormick. Because well, she doesn't want to see them die. Exactly. Right? She doesn't want to see them die in age. So she winds up like using desire as a way to feel close to them without losing them and 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 sort of like conflates desire with love like so yeah. so even though even though she never like really loved John McCormick she winds up having sex with him because that would fuck up her relationship with William but it would also mean that she'd never have to see John grow up and die right yeah uh, uh so yeah, it's just, I I wanted to play with that a little bit more. I didn't. I I, I want to be clear. Like, maybe I could have gone into more detail, but I wanted to be clear. I'm not just using Adeline as like a means for, for like being a promiscuous woman, therefore bad. But I wanted it to be like, well, what it's if? It's not bad though. It's yeah. just that's that's her way of coping. That's her way of coping, and it's not a, a healthy way. I wanted to show no. like she's not just like a promiscuous slut. I that's not the point I was making at all. It's that she has issues with fidelity and she uses a self-destructive coping mechanism to get through her loneliness yes yeah that's all yeah i just yeah i just you know, wanted to make the, sure it's all the, the trauma that's all yeah it's, whatever that's fine <laughs> whatever um <laughs> yeah i don't know any last minute thoughts about uh oh i, I do want to say that our pitch our mutual pitch i think is actually our best pitch the comedy i, I agree undercover thing all of these mutual pitches always end up really well because we bounce ideas off of each other two heads are better than one for sure z's 
Uh, any last minute thoughts about the age of Adeline? Um, not really. I do. I really like the idea of it. Mm, me too. But I also just really don't like the execution. Execution. Yeah, it's frustrating. Yeah. That's why I really think this is a perfect movie for Cinemasters because it's like love the idea just frustrating execution and if i was gonna do this movie again i would certainly keep blake lively as adeline i thought she kills it yeah. except the writing is not great for her character yeah yeah where can people find you you can find me at twitch.tv slash Alyssa Lou with three o's or you can find my uh creative handmade stuff i guess on instagram at Alyssa rose handmade you can find our band robot philosopher anywhere you listen to dope music we've got new music coming out in the next couple months so please keep your eyes and ears very open exciting. for that very exciting <laughs> uh you can also find our other channel the cinemasters for more scripted content and uh thanks so much for hanging out with us right here on cinecasters peace bye